Canberry, known for making people laugh on classic TV shows like F Groups, Mayberry RFD, and Mama's Family, brought happiness to many homes in the 1960s and 70s. But despite his funny roles, he faced incredibly sad moments in his personal life. In this video, we'll talk about the heartbreaking events that affected Barry, such as losing his baby son shortly after birth and his daughter passing away in a car accident at 25. Facts but represents the tragic death of Ken Berry and his children who died before him. Humble Midwestern Beginnings Ken Berry was born on November 3, 1933 in the quiet town of Moline, Illinois. His parents, Daryl and Bernice, were regular working folks. Since he was a kid, Ken loved performing. He would put on dance shows and funny skits to make his family laugh. When he was 12, his teacher noticed his lively performances after seeing him mimic a children's dance group at a school event. The teacher suggested that Ken take tap dance lessons. Ken really got into dancing, learning from the best like Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly by watching their musicals. He dreamed of showbiz as a way to escape the ordinary life in the Midwest where he grew up. At just 15 years old, all his hard work paid off. Ken won a talent search competition and band leader Horace Hyde noticed him. He was so good at tap dancing that Hyde offered him a chance to tour America and Europe with his musical group. For a 15-year-old with Brick Green, this was a huge opportunity. While traveling with Hyde for 15 months in the late 1940s, Ken honed his talents and made friends with fellow castmates, including Hyde's son. Answering the call to serve In 1950, after coming back home, Ken Berry focused on his studies and graduated from high school. Feeling a sense of duty to his country, he willingly joined the U.S. Army at 18. Even during peacetime, he was stationed at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. Always the entertainer, Ken carried his tap shoes everywhere on the base, using any opportunity to dance and lift the spirits of the troops. One night, he entered a military talent contest, and the winner would get to appear on TV's Soldier Parade, hosted by Erlene Francis. Ken quickly put together an impressive routine vowing the judges and earning an early discharge pass to travel to the New York studio. His national TV debut gave him a confidence boost, and he continued winning contests both in the US and Europe, headlining USO shows near Air Force bases. During this time, he became friends with Sergeant Leonard Nimoy, who encouraged Ken's artistic dreams. After completing his two-year army duty in 1952, Nimoy advised Ken to head to Hollywood to pursue acting. Scraping by as an actor After leaving the army, Barry headed to California with big dreams but few connections. He followed Sergeant Nemo's advice and worked hard, auditioning during day and attending acting and dance classes at night, using the GI Bill to help pay for it. His determination paid off when Universal Studios offered him a small contract. However, as musical movies became less popular in the mid-1950s, Barry struggled to find significant roles after two years with Universal and only small supporting parts in films like Up in Smoke, he was let go. Facing financial difficulties, Barry went to Las Vegas hoping to revive his career with a stage show. There, he got a major opportunity opening for the famous comedy duo Abbott and Costello at the Sahara Hotel and Casino. Impressed by his talent, Costello hired Barry for an extended engagement performing comedic sketches in their nightclub act. Following this success, Ken got a role in the Ken Murray Blackouts, a popular but brisk Vegas burlesque show with the glamorous showgirls and bold humor. Entertaining nightly audiences boosted his confidence and his dancing skills started getting noticed. From military entertainer to Broadway star, the Blackout show became more popular when it moved to LA. During the successful run in 1958, where Ken Berry played various funny characters every night, his old army friend Leonard Nimoy came to see a show. After the performance, Nimoy introduced Berry to actress Dee Wallace. Dee Wallace was impressed by Ken's unique stage presence and she persuaded her friend Billy Barnes to cast Barry in a new satirical movie review planned for a small LA nightclub. Barnes took Wallace's advice and Barry got an audition. He amazed the composer with energetic song and dance performances full of joy. Barry quickly became the standout star among Barnes' group of sketch comedians, dancers, and musicians. Thanks to Ken's contribution, the Billy Barnes People Review moved to larger theaters in LA before unexpectedly transferring to New York's famous off-Broadway scene in 1959, with Barry still part of the cast. 
The show received fantastic review during its initial run on the East Coast, but legal issues cut it short after just a few weeks. After resolving the matters, Barnes gathered the cast six months later backed by substantial financial support. Big Breaks on Broadway and TV Big names in entertainment Lucille Ball and Carol Burnett both loved Ken's very unique comedy style. They signed him to contract that changed his life. Ball brought him on board for her sitcom The Lucy Show in 1963, and he also got a regular role on The Anne Southern Show, playing a witty hotel bellman. At the same time, Carol Burnett featured Ken in recurring guest spots throughout the 11 year run of The Carol Burnett Show. This support from two famous celebrities transformed Ken Berry's career. People across America loved his friendly and youthful charm. Almost overnight, he went from being a LA understudy to a South Africa actor on network television in the mid 1960s. He made memorable appearances on shows like The Dick Van Dyke Show, Dr. Kildare, and various sitcom plots, raising his standing in the industry. Then, in 1965, Ken Berry got a major role in the ABC sitcom F Group, playing the bumbling but good hearted US Army Captain Wilton Permenter. The show, set in the Wild West, made him a genuine primetime star over two fun seasons. Ken's talent for physical comedy and well timed jokes, especially as the clumsy officer who often tripped over his own feet, earned him hearty laughs from the audience. By 1967, Ken Berry had won over viewers with her friendly nature and lively comedic style. Tragedy Strikes While Ken Berry's fame was rising, he faced deep personal pain behind the scenes. In 1960, he married actress Jackie Joseph, whom he had met in the Billy Barnes troupe. In 1962, during Ken's breakout role alongside Lucille Ball on The Lucy Show, Jackie finally became pregnant. Unfortunately, severe complications during the risky delivery led to the heartbreaking loss of their firstborn son just six days after the birth. The early trauma deeply affected the couple. As Ken threw himself into his growing sitcom career, he and Jackie turned to adoption. Within a couple of years, they adopted a newborn girl named Jennifer. In 1964, as Ken gained more fame from F Group, the Berries also adopted an infant son, John. For over a decade, Ken managed to demands of being primetime star and dedicated dad when the cameras stopped rolling. However, the family tragedy resurfaced in the late 1970s. Ken received shocking news that his 25-year-old daughter Jennifer had tragically died in a car accident. This phone call brought immense grief, reopening old wounds, and playing a role in Ken's 1967 divorce from Jackie after 16 years together. Becoming Mayberry's Leading Man In 1968, Ken Berry took a significant role in the TV show Mayberry RFD, which was a spin-off of The Andy Griffith Show. The new series focused on the people of Mayberry after the character Andy Taylor left to become a diplomat in South America. Ken Berry played the lead character Sam Jones, who was widowed farmer and newly elected city council president. This role was a big change for Berry, as many people knew him mainly for his part in F Group. Instead of copying Andy Griffith's well-known sheriff Taylor, Berry brought his own genuine Midwestern charm to the character, intentionally avoiding a southern accent. His approach worked well, and for three seasons, Ken Berry led the show with his unique mix of humor and warmth. He even received a symbolic passing of the torch on the screen from Andy Griffith himself. Barry's Final Years and Legacy As we have discussed, Ken Barry went through many tough losses in his personal life. However, after almost 20 years since his divorce, he found some stability with Susie Walsh in 1994. Sadly, in 2016, he had to face the heartbreaking loss of his son John to a brain cancer adding to the earlier losses of his other two children. Despite these personal tragedies, Ken Berry kept finding comfort and energy in show business. He attended sitcom conventions and continued performing with the same lively and clumsy charm that defined his long career in variety shows. It was remarkable how he could maintain a positive public image despite facing personal grief. In December 2018, at the age of 85, we said goodbye to the vibrant and funny spirit of Ken Berry due to heart disease. Ken undeniably brought joy to many generations with his charming and funny characters. His career in the performing arts lasted over 60 years, showing not just his talent but also his strength in dealing with personal and professional challenges.
Canberry, a true Miss Westerner, had a talent for bringing cheerful and entertaining fun to his audience, even in tough times. His legacy lives on through reruns that introduce new fans to his lovable personality and comedic talents. Now, we want to hear from you thinking about Canberry's amazing journey and the heartbreaking loss of his children. Which parts of his career or life touch you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments and as always, thanks for watching.